Hello, everyone. Welcome to our session. Today, we will talk about the progress for cloud computing on ARM architecture. So first, uh, I will talk about the Linaro's work on ARM64 uh, cloud computing upstream. And then uh, Zheng Yu from Huawei will talk about the status of applications on ARM infrastructure. In the last part, Changbo from EasyStack will talk about the production experience when adopting the ARM server in cloud computing. Area. Just a brief introduction. Uh, this is Kevin Zhao from uh, Linaro, and now I'm working on the OpenStack and Ceph and Kubernetes upstream. Linaro is an open source organization on ARM ecosystem, which has been founded by ARM and its mainly partner, such as Huawei, Qualcomm, and Google. Linaro mainly focuses on the upstream development and maintenance, such as Linux kernel, ToolChain and also it has several groups for the different user cases. For example, we have a Linaro data center and the cloud group, which is focusing on the enterprise market, such as cloud, big data, server architecture, HPC, and AI. So all our cloud work are mainly on the OpenStack, Ceph, and Kubernetes. We have based on our upstream work to set up a open source ARM64 Enterprise Cloud, which has been called the Linaro Developer Cloud. So we, we, uh, this cloud are uh, not only benefit to our members, we're leveraging the, our members' hardware. So it can test the hardware in cloud computing, and, but also it can help and organize the ARM64 resources to benefit the upstream developers. So uh, if you are a developer and don't have the ARM64 resources, so we, we welcome your registration, and it is totally free ARM64 cloud. And also if the upstream have the interest to set up the CI on our cloud, yeah, we are also welcome. Generally, we are based on the OpenStack and Scythe as an infrastructure as a service. And on top of this, we can support the VM-based workloads, a virtual machine, and Kubernetes as a service. And also you can leverage in the head template to organize your workloads. Here is our general components. Here we can see uh, all our uh, infrastructure are deployed by OpenStack Caller. And on top of this are the mainly OpenStack components for the VM provision for networking. And we have a, uh, enabled the Magnum, Octavia, and Heat to support the ARM64 based Kubernetes as a service. Besides, if you have the, if you already set up the Kubernetes cluster, uh, the Kubernetes should leverage the different controller to talk with the infrastructure as a service. Here is OpenStack. So we have also enabled several controller to control, to offer the volume support, the, the network support. Okay, so based on our OpenStack side work and the, the Kubernetes side work, we are now has been certified by CNCF and the OpenStack. So you can easily find our introduction on the CNCF landscape. We are now a CNCF certified cloud. Next, actually now the hardware automation uh, would be a hot topic today and uh, especially on the ARM64 machines, because first, uh, there are a lot of workloads need to running on the bare metal. First is uh, several uh, hardware, several hardware uh, requests CI, so they need to running on the, on, on the bare metal. And also, uh, there are several workloads need, need, uh, need to running on the bare metal due to the virtualization limit. Uh, some workloads are requested the KVM support, but as we know, the ARM servers do not support the nested virtualization right now. So uh, set up the bare metal resources uh, and offer the API to the external would be a quite important scenario. And also for the better performance request on, uh, about the network and, and uh, storage. So we, are, uh, we know that a lot of companies are tending to use the Kubernetes on bare metal. So this case would be a good good use case for the OpenStack hardware automation. And also, 
on the HPC area, a lot of the machines need to be organized. So it also would be a good scenario for this. And based on the hardware auto automation, the disk less boot would, uh, would be a very good topic to talk and to use because uh, provisions, of, pr provisions of hardware on the local disk would taking a lot of time and, and actually sometimes you just need to running the CI jobs on the bare metal. The user do not care about if they are uh, running the yeah, running the jobs on the bare metal local disk. They can use the diskless boot to have a, a remote disk. This would take a lot, uh, save a lot of time when, uh, when provisioning the machines. And now for achieving this on ARM64, there are mainly four gaps here. So first is about Ironic. Ironic do not support diskless boot from Cinder Scythe. Yeah, Ironic support boot from volume feature, but from Cinder Scythe, this part has not been uh, supported. So actually due to Cinder, do not support SFSSC driver. We need to make sure it, it support first. And then the SFSSC, uh, this client, this uh, SFSSC client is not, is not stable. And also we need to make sure that all these control pipes and the data pipes can be a suitable solution on ARM6 ARM servers. We need to make sure the ARM server is uh, compatible. Here is just uh, the idea of the diskless boot. We're leveraging the Ionic Cinder and call, call the Ceph SCSI support from Ceph side to boot the bare metal machines. The bare metal is a diskless uh, BMs. So the disk, it, it should have a disk, but the disk is uh, is produced by the self SCSI. Mainly there are three components here, three mainly features need to support. Uh, so first in Ionic is a boot from Cinder, Cinder volume. So this part has been supported so we can leverage the API. And from Cinder, Cinder need to support self SCSI driver. So this part, we are working with the upstream to land it to, to make it merge. And now we are blocking on the CI job fill. And the last part is from the Cinder, the Cinder SCSI gateway. So this is a self component. So we need to make sure it, it is stable and uh, can adopting into the production level. Now uh, we can see the control pipes and data pipes. In the control pipes, we need to leveraging the Cinder RBD SCSI driver. So this one is a Cinder self SCSI driver. And also we need to install RBD SCSI client to connect it with the self SCSI gateway. So the self SCSI gateway can be deployed alongside with the self uh, and you can use either self ADM or self Ansible or just uh, deploy it manually. So after deployment, it, it will have our RBD target API to talking with the Cinder client and uh, then doing something to the self side. So on the data pipes would be quite simple. The bare metal node need to use the SCSI initiator to connect it to the SCSI target, which has been already set up on the SCSI, SCSI gateway. So actually we know that mainly our mainly of our tasks and jobs are make sure that the control pipes is smooth and the, the data pipes is compatible. So talking about our progress. So in Ironic, uh, it supports the local disk, local disk not either, uh, either um, by Ironic deployed by Cola or other components. Yeah, we have uh, doing a lot of the patches to Cola to make it, make it uh, support and also uh, we need to make sure that the Cinder volume, I don't think both from Cinder volume has support, but uh, we know that it's now just to support IPXE, but for uh, ARM64, the IPXE uh, has a problem because IPXE need to uh, fuse a table called IBFT, as I say, both from your table. So this one is a secure for booting kernel without filling as I say, info to kernel command line. I need to fill this table, but on ARM64 firmware, 
uh, we are lacking of these tables. So we, we need to make sure that the firmware can support. Yeah. So actually now we have also another solution, just a workaround solution to suppose the PXC generally support. Uh, now we are working on this to refine Ionic to boot from the extend uh, to PXC support. On thinner side, we are uh, need to based on RBD driver to reuse the uh, RBD driver to implement the thinner SKC driver. Uh, so this is the thinner SKC driver. So this one is not ready actually, just uh, submit to the upstream and waiting CI job merged. So uh, we are working on fix the CI job error. So on Ceph side, the Cinder SCSI driver not merged is due to the Ceph SCSI client is not, not very, very stable. So we, also, we are also working on to make sure that Cinder SCSI client can be a stable and a production ready one. And in the in general, Cinder now will only support the Ubuntu focal currently. Yeah. Uh, for the SCSI driver because of the package dependency. And also, uh, when reusing the ARM64 server as a self SCSI gateway, we may experience a kind of crash. We need to uh, backport using the new newly uh, Linux kernel called 5.9 or 5.9. So th this version will include the bug fix. Okay, so. Thanks to uh, listening on my talk. And now I will hand over to Zheng Yu. Hi, I'm Chang Bo Guo from Instack. Today, I'd like to share the best practice of running cloud on ARM server. There are four paths. First, we released the customer technology preview version in the February 2020, and we released GA version in October. In the GA version, we support more types of ARM servers, modern farm. We also have modern 10 customers which run cloud on ARM servers. The last one is, I would like to describe the problem we meet and how to fix them. First, uh, introduce the changes of fundamental components. We upgrade the kernel from the full port 14 to full 18. We also upgrade Kubernetes to, to the version 1.16. Another big change is that we replaced the Docker with ContainerD. We also upgrade Ceph to a new version. Uh, we support more types of ARM servers. There are five types of ARM servers. The main work we did is that we drove the differences of the BMC and from where, and also test and fix the hardware issues like network card. We support different ARM servers in the same clusters. There are some limitations and differences to x86. First is the CPU ratio. We set two. There's a little different to the x86. We consider the CPU ratio in production. Um, don't think about Windows. Yes, the gas OS support. Also the gas image boot mode only support UEFI. And uh, um, doesn't support GPU, include the VGPU and the PCI pass-through. 
another limitation is that the total number of network card and disk less than 10. Another um, limitation. Um, also, don't spout the hyper threading. And uh, in some ARM servers, the output of the FMI and the disk command missing some data of sensors like the CPU temperature. We also do some ad adoption works. First, at guest OS, we ran the CentOS and the Keylin three versions and other guest OS based on the Ubuntu. The right, the right list uh, so the middleware we run on the ARM servers. Uh, use the story for public cloud, the CC cloud. The CC cloud plan have four regions. Cost, uh, cu cost. There are two regions ready, Beijing and Wuhan. In one region, they are found, found controllers and computer node and the storage com compute, nearly 100 ARM servers. The public cloud also adding the ARM 86 servers in the same region. Current, there are, there are about 500 virtual machine in the, the cloud, public cloud. Another user story, story, a company of securities is a development and test environment with 10 ARM servers with CPU FT2000 and plus. The business running on the small cloud is the blockchain business and the cost control service. The next plan is that it's part more servers and the business. Yeah, the arm, the arm, the part, the product of arm is ready for production. The last part is the problems we need and how to fix it. The first one is that the bandwidth of 10 gigabit network card is not stable. Sometimes it's only six gigabit. How to fix it? By default, the RQ rebalance will schedule the CPU to, to the network card queue. We we need to bind the network card queue to the local CPU. The second one is some servers don't support SRIOV. First, we need to turn on LMOU on BIOS and then set up the, some system configurations. Then we can split one network card into some virtual merge virtual function. We only test uh, uh, the test of Tyson ARM server with the CPU Kunpeng 920 has passed. The ARM servers with the CPU FT2000 plus can't turn on the LMU so he, they don't support SRV. Uh, for, another friend frequently asked the question is that what's the flavor we should choose on the ARM server? We have some experience uh, on C, C, H16. So the, the way to Got the result is that first we got the score 
of the specific CPU spec test, then calculate the flavor for ARM based 86. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the session. Uh, my name is Zheng Yuzhong, and uh, I'm going to briefly introduce to you the status of applications on ARM infrastructures. Uh, as Kevin introduced in the first part, now uh, in the software stack, uh, cloud hypervisor and container layer have very good status on ARM supports. But m many uh, users may ask, uh, how about the uh, uh, softwares and services running on on top of them. Uh, I have some information to answer that question. So let's start. Um, we have done uh, some jobs to enable all the services, uh, but uh, let me firstly introduce uh, why we are going to do, uh, why we're doing it and how do we do it. So uh, first, uh, uh, let me show you some the, about the current status. Uh, I think everyone knows that uh, x86 server are the dominant uh, architecture in the current uh, server market. So in most uh, upstream, uh, open source development upstream, uh, they use x86 CI pipelines and the pipeline will provide develop, build and test and packaging processes. And the outcome of the development pipeline is an uh, software package uh, normally is x86 uh, for x86 architecture. So for x86 users, the users can use it directly. But for uh, other architectures like ARM users, uh, they may need some extra works, uh, which is not very convenient. So to solve this problem, we uh, propose to various uh, upstream communities uh, to add ARM CI pipelines. Uh, with this pipeline, uh, we will use uh, the same test scripts, build scripts, and test the uh, uh, cases. And after that, we will provide packaging uh, function as the S86 pipeline. Uh, after that, uh, we will have an ARM uh, package, which uh, ARM user can use directly. And that will make ARM users the first class citizens. And this CI will be run in parallel uh, with the old x86 CI pipeline in the upstream. So it can also provide the end-to-end develop uh, pipeline uh, support to upstream projects. Uh, with the method I introduced in the last slide, uh, we have uh, already uh, in, uh, enabled uh, a lot of uh, areas. The first I want to talk about is the big data area. Uh, in the big data area, we have already uh, pushed the ARM CI uh, pipeline to uh, the top uh, projects uh, like Hadoop, Spark, uh, HBase, Hive, Flink, and Kudu. Uh, we run the same test uh, scripts and uh, with same test cases, uh, as you can see from the uh, numbers. And because of uh, our stable running for quite a long time. Uh, like Hadoop, we have already running for over a year, and Spark is also about a year. Uh, those projects have uh, officially claimed the ARM support. And Hadoop have already released the first ARM version in the uh, July of this year. And we have also done a lot in the database area, uh, the famous uh, open source database projects like MariaDB, Greenplum, uh, PostgreSQL, and RocksDB are uh, have now also have uh, ARM CIs. And MariaDB has been tested on CentOS, Fedora, Red Hat, Enterprise Linux, and Derby. Uh, we have also, uh, they have also released packages on those platforms. Uh, you can have a try if you are interested. Also for the uh, new hot areas like AI and cloud native, uh, we have also enabled uh, quite a lot of them. Like the, in the AI uh, area, we have enabled uh, the two 
uh, major projects, TensorFlow and PyTorch. And in Cloud Native, we have uh, cooperate with the CNSF uh, Foundation to uh, enable the ARM support in the CNCF.ci platform. And it supported Kubernetes, uh, ContainerD, Prometheus, uh, CardDNS, and FloatD, and every uh, projects uh, to test on ARM architectures, which is uh, a, very, uh, a very good coverage for cloud native projects. And we have also covered the, the other uh, most used cases uh, is the web services. Uh, as you can see, we, in this area, we enabled a lot of uh, web services, uh, which are uh, dominating the uh, market. So uh, uh, we can see this uh, full map that uh, for uh, all those areas, we have already enabled all the major projects, open source projects uh, in uh, each area, which provides uh, a suitable selection for users in that area. So I have to say that uh, the uh, application uh, stack for ARM hardware is already very good. Uh, user can use it. Uh, user can use it directly. And uh, uh, for users uh, that concerning what kind of uh, profit can I get from using an ARM driver, uh, we have also done some tests uh, in from in the uh, price view and the performance point of view. Uh, as we can, as you can see, we uh, created uh, a cluster uh, in three uh, different uh, clouds that can provide uh, ARM. Uh, uh, ARM resources, uh, the price is down to about 20% uh, or to 50% 50, 50 uh, 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 compared to the uh, same uh, x86 uh, platform. And uh, uh, we didn't get a, a very obvious degradation on the performance. The performance only got down uh, like three uh, percent for uh, this uh, Hadoop test uh, and we can get the uh, some conclusion about it is the overall performance is uh, quite identical to com comparing to x86 clusters and we have 20% uh, to 50% uh, cost uh, uh, cheaper than x86 resources and uh, we have tested that the big data workloads can be smoothly shipped to new added ARM nodes, which is very good for uh, users are, that are interested. Uh, and that's all for my part. And uh, uh, Gu Changbo will give you some uh, more information about uh, how to landing the uh, ARM servers and ARM services. And here is, is one of our uh, Slack channel. Welcome to join the Slack channel and uh, discuss about uh, your needs and uh, requirements. Thanks a lot.